This week is all about deduction and induction, or you may have heard these described as deductive and inductive reasoning. So our goals here are for you to be able to explain the two types of argument, deductive and inductive, and how to recognize their characteristics so that when you are presented with an argument, you can figure out if it's deduction or induction. All right, so to kind of recap what we already know about arguments, every argument has at least one premise, sometimes more, that lead to a specific conclusion. And in this chapter, we're going to talk about two different types of argument. But this relates, of course, back to the key principle of critical thinking, logical reasoning, right? So we're going to talk about and focus on deductive and inductive arguments. But there's also a third main type of argument that doesn't really get thrown around as much, but is still um, distinct from the other two, and that's abductive reasoning. All right, so let's start with deduction. We've already, we've probably heard this phrase before, but it's important to remember that with deductive reasoning, we are going from general to specific. All right, so in this kind of argument, if your premises are true and the logic of the argument is valid, then the conclusion must also be true. So, for example, and this is a very simplistic example, but it's just kind of our, you know, starting point. All birds have wings. So the general statement that is true. The hawk is a bird. That is also true. That is valid. Therefore, that's my signal that I'm going to get a conclusion. The hawk has wings. So this is an example of deductive reasoning or top-down general to specific reasoning. There's no room for ambiguity or uncertainty. Um, this is often referred to as a necessary inference because of that um, certainty, that lack of ambiguity. All right. So a lot of times with this form of reasoning, the truth of the hypothesis, the value of the hypothesis or the premise is assumed known and it's not proven in and of itself. Um, so it's something that is widely accepted. <coughs> Excuse me. Something that's widely accepted to be true. All right. If you still need a little bit more clarity with deduction and deductive arguments, these are three websites that will really um, help give you some solid examples to support your understanding of deduction, but for the sake of this lesson, we're not going to go into each of these, just want you to be aware of them. So next up, we have inductive reasoning or induction. With induction, we are flipping the pyramid. We are going from particular or specific to general. So because we are taking specific evidence and trying to draw a more general conclusion from it, that means that there's going to be some degree of uncertainty. Um, you can never truly gather enough data to remove all uncertainty. So it's impossible to tell whether the conclusion is true without actually investigating it and testing it, unlike the hawk and wings example. All right. So with inductive reasoning, we tend to classify these arguments as either strong or weak or somewhere on that spectrum of strong to weak. OK, but it's important to keep in mind the reason we do this is because with inductive reasoning, even if there are true premises and there is a strong logical argument, the conclusion is never 100 percent certain. It is simply more likely to be true if the argument and premises are strong. All right. So this is a helpful method of reasoning when we need to come up with some generalizations, some general conclusions based on individual examples. So this is often called bottom-up logic. Okay. 
So a little bit more information about inductive reasoning. Induction is a non-necessary inference, which is another way of saying what I just repeated on the last slide, which is that the conclusion is not necessarily true even if the premises are true and the argument is strong. So with inductive arguments, it is possible that a true premise could still lead to a false conclusion. Okay, so here's a basic example of to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about here. John and Ben are siblings and have brown hair. So all of their brothers and sisters have brown hair. Now, it is likely that if these two siblings have brown hair, that their other siblings will also have brown hair. However, this conclusion could still be incorrect. Our only way to verify it is to go look at the hair color of their other siblings. Make sense? All right, so just like with deductive reasoning, we've got some further examples for you guys to help clarify any questions that you may have. So if you want some more examples of induction, inductive reasoning, here are two great resources for you. You can access these links not through this video. The video won't have these links live, but in the PDF version of the PowerPoint that's available to you in Moodle. So now let's talk about that third one, the one that most people haven't really heard of before, and that's abduction or abductive reasoning. Okay? This is the third logical reasoning process, and it's referred to as inference to the best explanation. Okay, So basically what we're getting at here is using critical thinking to provide the simplest explanation given a certain set of facts or observations. So this is kind of like everyday reasoning. It's not as formal as the other two modes. So here's an example. The grass is wet. It must have rained recently. I mean, I'm using logical reasoning. It's a good logical uh, conclusion to draw based on the evidence that I have available. But can you think of another reason the grass might be wet? Maybe the sprinklers just kicked on, or maybe the gardener just came by, or maybe a dog came by. I mean, we can come up with a lot of different reasons why the grass may be wet. Maybe somebody poured out their drink. All right. So the conclusions in this process do not follow logically from the hypothesis. Okay. So abductive reasoning while useful because it gets us to the simplest or most likely explanation for a specific set of facts, data, observations. It can be useful because it gets us to a conclusion quickly, but it can also get us to a conclusion that's not necessarily logical or valid. Okay, so now let's talk about how to distinguish between an inductive argument and a deductive argument. When you are looking at an argument, how can you determine which of these two um, forms of reasoning is the author using? So one way that you can determine if the argument is deductive or inductive is to ask yourself, does the conclusion have to be true if the premises are true? If the answer to this is yes, then the argument is deductive. If the answer to this is no, meaning that even if the premises are true, the conclusion could still be false, there could still be an alternative answer, then your argument that you're looking at is inductive. Another way to determine whether it's inductive or deductive is to look for indicators. And we talked a little bit about indicators um, the last two weeks when we talked about what signal words or phrases could indicate the author is giving you the premises, the author is giving you evidence, the author is giving you a conclusion. Well, there are common indicators that can tell us that the author is making a deductive argument, like such as must and certainly, or signal that the author is using inductive reasoning, such as likely or probable. All right. But just like with last time, the authors don't have to use these indicator terms. 
And sometimes, especially in our less formal communication, we can even misuse these phrases. So there's not a necessarily a foolproof way to determine if the argument you're reading is inductive or deductive, but it's one way to help try to figure it out. Okay, so now let's talk about deduction and induction as a team. Okay, they are distinct, they are different, but they can also be used to support one another. So a lot of times when we are involving a lot of times when we are involved in higher order critical thinking we are going to find that induction and deduction kind of work hand in hand so for example you're probably already familiar with the scientific method you observe you question you formulate a hypothesis you make a prediction you test it Oftentimes that particular set of steps can be repeated many times or you may repeat someone else's testing in order to try to verify or disprove their hypothesis. And then from all of that testing, from your predictions, your testing, your hypothesis, you form conclusions and then you communicate those conclusions with your audience. So we have deduction and induction working together and reflecting on one another. Um, so deduction and induction, yes, they are different paths, but they are still both part of the critical thinking process. So if you're still feeling a little unsure about deduction and induction, again, here are some helpful resources. There are five websites here that cover inductive and deductive reasoning, either together or separated. Um, the Khan Academy websites and videos are particularly accessible and helpful. Um, so maybe if I didn't, if my explanation didn't click with you, maybe one of these other explanations will. So I highly recommend checking those out if you're still feeling unsure about the differences between deduction and induction. So here are some thoughts to consider before you move on to your quiz and your discussion board. Is one form of reasoning, inductive or deductive reasoning, inherently better than the other? I would argue no, they are not inherently better or worse than each other. It's just that they are differently suited to different needs. Okay, they might be better or worse in a particular situation, but not just based on their definitions alone. Now, the next question here to think about is, can we have greater confidence in the conclusion of one type of argument compared to the other? And if so, which one? Well, which one of these, if the premises are true and the argument logic is sound, the conclusion must be true? Is it inductive or deductive? That's right, it's deductive. So in this sense, a deductive conclusion is one that we can be more confident with than an inductive conclusion. All right. Do we still use inferences with both of these types of arguments? Yes, inference is still a key component here. Um, the more detailed the author the more of those inferences may be spelled out for the audience, but there's still steps in the logical, critical thinking process. And then number four, this one's kind of an opinion question, which might pop up in the discussions. Which type of argument, inductive or deductive, do you consider the weaker type of argument and why? Remember, there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer. I'm just looking for you to explain your answer. So finally, here are the sources for this presentation, and some of them can be very helpful for um, your study and review of induction versus deduction. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email or send me a Moodle message, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.